Hello viewers, I am Dr. Romeo. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Tetralogy of Fallot. In this video, we will try to define Tetralogy of Fallot. Then we will discuss the four cardinal features, embryology, morphology, clinical features, tet spell, treatment, and complication of tetralogy of fellow. Okay, so let's begin. First question, what is tetralogy of fellow? Tetralogy of fellow is a congenital cyanotic heart disease that classically involves four anomalies of the heart. Those four abnormalities of the heart include right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defect which is also known as VSD and aorta overriding the ventricular septal defect. Okay, so I'm repeating the definition again for my students. Tetralogy of fallow can be defined as a congenital cyanotic heart disease that classically involves four anomalies of the heart and they include the following. Right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defect and aorta overriding the ventricular septal defect. Tetralogy of Fallow was described in 1888 by French physician Fallow and therefore this disease is named after him. So now that we have defined Tetralogy of Fallow and discussed its four cardinal features. Now we will move on to the next point and that was the embryology behind the tetralogy of fallow development. And this is very important for your examinations and the thing that you have to know is during development of our heart sometimes there may be anterior superior displacement of the in fundibular septum and that will result in development of tetralogy of fallow. Recall that the in fundibular septum is a septum that used to separate the right and left ventricular outflow tract. Okay, so when that in fundibular septum has been displaced anteriorly and superiorly, that will result in tetralogy of fallow. So if you have a question in your examination regarding the embryology, you have to remember this term, anterior superior displacement of the infundibular septum. Okay, so now that we have uh, discussed briefly the embryology behind tetralogy of fallow, now we will explain all those four abnormalities that I had mentioned in the definition. Okay, so now we will discuss about tetralogy of fallow and those abnormalities. So, to understand the morphology of tetralogy of fallow, you can see that I have drawn an image of a simplified heart. So, let's first try to recall the physiology of heart. So, this is the right atrium. Venous blood enters the right atrium via superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Then what happens? From right atrium, blood will go to the right ventricle and there is a valve between the right atrium and right ventricle that is the tricuspid valve. Then in a normal heart, blood will go from right ventricle via the pulmonary trunk to the lungs. In the lungs, gaseous exchange will occur and then oxygen-rich blood will 
return to the heart and enter the left atrium. Then from the left atrium, it will go into the left ventricle. Recall that the valve between the left atrium and left ventricle is called mitral valve. And then from left ventricle, blood will go to the aorta and uh, circulate throughout our body. And remember that in a normal heart, there is no gap between the right ventricle or left ventricle. Okay, so the gap you are seeing here in this image, this is the VSD. This gap will not be present in a normal heart. So now that we have uh, discussed briefly about the normal circulation in a heart, now let's look at this image and see what happens in a patient of tetralogy of fallow. So recall that tetralogy of fallow has four abnormalities. The first one was right ventricular outflow obstruction. So let's go back to the image. So this is the right ventricle. This is the right ventricular outflow tract. So there will be some problem here. The problem may be pulmonary stenosis. Recall that these valves are pulmonary valve and they may become narrow and sometimes the problem may be subpulmonary stenosis that is the problem is not actually in the pulmonary valve but however the problem is below the pulmonary valve there may be um, hypertrophy of the muscles below the pulmonary valve and that is also obstructing the right ventricular outflow tract now what will happen when there is obstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract? The right ventricle will also um, try to work hard to pump out blood against that resistance. And that will result in right ventricular hypertrophy. The muscles of the right ventricle will become enlarged. Okay. So first there was right ventricular outflow obstruction, then the right ventricular muscles will begin to enlarge, that is right ventricular hypertrophy. And since there is also ventricular septal defect and there is also very high pressure in this right ventricle, so blood will move from right ventricle to the left ventricle. Now one very important point that you have to remember when you study congenital heart disease uh, usually we classify them right to left shunt and left to right shunt. Now ventricular septal defect normally falls in the category of left to right shunt and the reason is if there is a defect between the left ventricle and right ventricular wall. Since normally pressure is higher in the left ventricle, so blood should come from the left ventricle to the right ventricle. Right. But then why in this case, even with the presence of ventricular septal defect, blood is moving from the right ventricle to the left ventricle? This is a very important thing and this is an exception. Normally VSD or ventricular septal defect is left to right. But here since there was pulmonary stenosis or subpulmonary stenosis, the pressure in the right ventricle was very high. So when there is a defect between the uh, right ventricle and left ventricle septum, so blood is now moving from right side of the heart to the left side. Okay? And what was the fourth component of tetralogy of fallow? The fourth component was aorta overriding the VSD. And to explain that, just look at this um, uh, image. You can see that this is the aorta and aorta is placed just over the VSD so that these right ventricular blood uh, when they go to the left ventricle they can easily move into the aorta. 
and since this right ventricular blood is oxygen poor so that will result in cyanosis and sometimes you will also hear another term that is blue baby or blue baby syndrome they are all referring to cyanosis now one important uh, side note that I will tell you now whenever uh, you say that uh, tetralogy of fallow is a congenital cyanotic heart disease the examiner may ask you then what are the other congenital cyanotic heart disease okay so this is an important thing to know you can also write down these things uh, in your book so the other cyanotic congenital heart disease include transposition of the great vessel um, that is a condition where the aorta and pulmonary trunk have changed their uh, position the aorta originating from the right ventricle instead of the left and pulmonary trunk originating from the left ventricle instead of the right and normally whenever there is transposition of um, those great vessels there has to be some other um, mixing defect in the heart for the patient to survive otherwise those type of uh, defect are not viable for life so that is another example of cyanotic congenital heart disease that was transposition of great vessel other examples include tricuspid atresia persistent truncus arteriosus etc so now that we have discussed briefly about the morphology of tetralogy of fellow now we will talk about two important things that you are often asked in the examination and they are cyanotic and acyanotic tetralogy now one thing you have to remember the severity of the tetralogy of fellow and its clinical manifestation are related to two factors they are the extent of pulmonary stenosis and the size of ventricular septal defect and according to these two factors we can divide tetralogy of fellow into cyanotic and acyanotic tetralogy so let's discuss those things one by one briefly so what do you mean by cyanotic tetralogy in this type of tetralogy the pulmonary stenosis is greater the extent of pulmonary stenosis is greater and the ventricular septal defect is mild okay so if we uh, come to this image that means here the pulmonary stenosis will be greater but the ventricular septal defect is mild and what will be the end result that will result in increased pressure in the right ventricle and that will lead to right to left shunt okay so that will result in cyanosis and the effect of that will be the effect of that on heart will be right ventricular hypertrophy due to high pressure there may be also hypertrophy of the right atrium there will be abnormal and a small tricuspid valve the left atrium and left ventricle will be smaller okay so this is in short about cyanotic tetralogy now what will happen when there is acyanotic tetralogy in acyanotic tetralogy the extent of pulmonary stenosis is mild but the ventricular septal defect is greater so what will be the result since the extent of pulmonary stenosis is mild so the right ventricular outflow obstruction will be less as a result right ventricular pressure will not be higher than left ventricular pressure and at the same time since the ventricular septal defect is more in acyanotic tetralogy so there will be left to right shunt because in this situation the right ventricular pressure is not higher and since normally the left ventricular pressure is higher than the right ventricle so there will be 
left to right shunt and that will result in acyanotic tetralogy. There will be no cyanosis in this situation. The effect of acyanotic tetralogy on the heart will be pressure hypertrophy of the right ventricle, volume hypertrophy of the left atrium and left ventricle and there will also be enlargement of the mitral and aortic orifice. So that's in short about acyanotic tetralogy. So now that we have discussed cyanotic and acyanotic tetralogy, now we will move on to the next topic and discuss the clinical features of tetralogy of fallow. Regarding the clinical feature of tetralogy of fallow, I have already mentioned that the clinical feature depends on the extent of pulmonary stenosis. So when there is severe pulmonary stenosis, there will be cyanosis since there will be mixing of the deoxygenated blood with the oxygenated blood and that will result in decreased oxygen saturation. SaO2 will be less than 80% when there is um, severe pulmonary stenosis and that will result in cyanosis. So there will be the features of blue baby syndrome, there will be digital clubbing. Recall that clubbing is a condition where there is deformity of the finger and nail. Okay, so in clubbing there is um, softening of the nail bed, there is loss of the angle between the nail bed and the nail fold and also there will be increased convexity of the nail fold and in the later stages of clubbing there will be increased thickness of the distal end of the finger and the finger will um, resemble a drumstick in appearance. Okay, so those are the clinical features of digital clubbing that we may see in cyanotic tetralogy of fallow. The other clinical features will include murmur. Recall that murmur means an abnormal heart sound and in tetralogy of fallow the murmur will be systolic murmur that is hard along the left sternal border. And one thing we have to remember regarding the cyanosis, the onset of cyanosis in tetralogy of fallow is usually after three months However, it can occur earlier, even at the time of uh, birth it may be present and all these things depends on the severity of the disease. The other clinical features will include difficulty of the baby uh, in feeding, there will be problem in gaining weight, the baby may have uh, dyspnea on exertion, Dyspnea means difficulty in breathing, so there may be difficulty in breathing on exertion. And also there will be some other clinical features like polycythemia and TET spell. Now what is TET spell? TET spell is a very high yield topic for your examination and the exact mechanism of TET spell is still doubtful but it is presumed that TET spell result due to transient increase in the resistance of blood flow to the lungs. So as there is increased resistance of blood flow to the lungs, what will happen? Then more blood will flow to the left ventricle via this right to left shunt. So there will be increased cyanosis and these babies will sometimes faint that is also known as syncope and sometimes that syncope can result in brain damage due to hypoxia. In some unfortunate cases TET spell may even result in death. However in modern day since uh, the disease are now diagnosed earlier so uh, usually TET spell is not that common anymore. Now one more thing you have to know about TET spell is that the older child when they are having attack of TET spell they realize that if they squat 
that improves their condition. The mechanism is when the child is in squatting position that increases his systemic vascular resistance. In other words, that increases his afterload. Okay, so as a result, there is increased pressure in the left ventricle and uh, that increased pressure reduces the right to left shunt. So when the baby is in squatting uh, position, that reduces the right to left shunt since pressure in the left heart increases and that reduces the effect of TET spell. So now that we have discussed TET spell, now we will move on to the final topic of today's discussion and that is the treatment and complication of tetology of fallow. The treatment of tetology of fallow is surgery, total surgical repair which is a type of open heart surgery is performed and in that surgery the surgeon will relieve the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction and in case of subpulmonary stenosis the surgeon may cut some muscle around that stenosis to relieve that stenosis and also a patch is used to fill up this uh, VSD so the ventricular septal defect is also corrected. The prognosis after total surgical repair is quite good the patient after surgery will have excellent cardiac function. However, in the long run, 90% of the patient who had undergone this total surgical repair, they can develop a leaky pulmonary valve. And uh, so most of them may also have to undergo another surgery in their adulthood and uh, that will involve a pulmonary valve replacement. So that is the treatment and the complication of the treatment of tetology of fallow that is a leaky pulmonary valve but uh, treatment is also available for that and that is pulmonary valve replacement later in adulthood. And one thing you also have to make a note of, suppose the baby uh, got a TET spell before he has undergone a corrective surgery. What will you do then? And that is a very uh, emergency situation. So beta blockers are used in that case. Say for example propanolol and also morphine may be administered to reduce the ventilatory drive of that baby and also epinephrine and norepinephrine may also be used to maintain blood pressure in those TET spell and uh, oxygen is also used in TET spell in management and the idea of using oxygen in TET spell management is oxygen is a potent vasodilator in the pulmonary circulation and a potent vasoconstrictor in the systemic circulation. So when we are using oxygen that will improve blood flow in the lungs and um, that will help in management of the TET spell. So this is in short about tetology of fallow. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment in the comment section below and let me know. And also subscribe to my channel for more videos. So that's all for today. I hope to see you again next week with a new topic of pathology. So until then, take care and stay blessed. Thank you for watching this video.